Welcome to Vanadium. This is Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. If you had asked me a few years ago if I believed extraterrestrials were visiting the planet, flying around in spaceships that defied physics, jamming our radar, and putting the best human technologies to shame, I would have counted you among the crazy. I heard about flying saucers in Area 51, people with tales of abductions, pregnancies, and implants. But I chalked it up, not always necessarily to lies, but to human imagination and its tendency to distort reality. But as time has passed, I've gotten older, hopefully wiser, and on this matter, my mind has changed. During my junior year of high school, March of 1997, half of Arizona saw something in the sky that couldn't be explained away by weather balloons or advanced Navy fighter planes, the famous Phoenix Lights. This particular sighting involved thousands of separate eyewitnesses scattered over an area hundreds of square miles, all with consistent stories of what they saw in the sky. Reports of unidentified objects flooded the 911 lines. Emergency calls came in by the hundreds in Arizona, Nevada, and northern Mexico. I even remember hearing about this one on the news. It all started about 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. A man reported seeing a V-shaped object above Henderson, Nevada. He said it was about the size of a Boeing 747, that it sounded like a rushing wind and that it had six lights on its leading edge. The governor of Arizona, with the great name Fife Symington, was one of the actual eyewitnesses. He even went on record about it with a very similar report. So did Snake Pliskin, Kurt Russell, who I found out is a pilot. It makes him even more badass in my opinion. Kurt was flying his Cessna at the time he saw the unidentified phenomenon. On October 19, 2017, astronomer Robert Warrick was reviewing images captured by a research telescope when he spotted something very strange. The telescope was perched at the top of a 10,000-foot volcanic peak on the island of Maui. It was scanning the sky every night, recording the video with the world's highest resolution camera at the time. The system was designed to hunt for near-Earth objects. Mostly large asteroids with paths potentially bringing them into our planet's astronomical neighborhood. These things are dangerous and can travel with an average velocity of up to 40,000 miles an hour. On October 17, 2017, the signal that caught Warwick's attention was moving almost five times that speed, nearly 200,000 miles per hour. Warwick sent out an alert to other observatories who began tracking the object with other telescopes. The more they watched the anomalous object, the more they looked, the more puzzling its behavior seemed. The object was roughly the size of a city block. As it tumbled through space, it seemed to flicker or send out pulses of light. It had an odd, at first indiscernible shape. Either it appeared long and skinny like a massive cigar or sausage, or flat and round. Instead of following the usual swinging elliptical path around the sun, this thing was traveling in a perfect straight line. This object, this bright dot, astronomers concluded, was something never seen before. They agreed it was an interstellar object, something from beyond our solar system, but they couldn't agree on what it was, and they seemed hesitant to present any clear theories. To the International Astronomical Union, the mysterious object became known as 1L-2017U1. Among those who actually saw the thing, it was named Oumuamua, from the Hawaiian word meaning scout. This thing seems very strange to me, and even though I'm not an astronomer, I don't find the conventional explanations they've presented very convincing. Oumuamua has a red color, and despite its close approach to the sun, it showed no signs of having a coma or fuzzy appearance in the images. You would expect to see a nebulous envelope or fuzziness around an object that close to the sun. There should be some signs of the materials melting or disintegrating, but there aren't. The object has also shown 
non-gravitational acceleration, which is very difficult to explain. It could be due to hidden outgassing or a firm push from solar radiation, but that really doesn't seem to add up. Some astronomers speculated Oumuamua could be a remnant of a disintegrated rogue comet. By July of 2019, most experts concluded Oumuamua was a natural object of some kind. A small handful of astronomers quietly suggested that Oumuamua could be the product of alien technology, but they were hesitant to make stronger statements without stronger evidence. Recently, Commander David Fravor, fighter pilot for almost 20 years, described his bizarre encounter over the ocean with the infamous Tic Tac UFO. Nothing had prepared him for what he witnessed during a routine training mission years ago on November 14, 2004. The object he saw from the cockpit was also observed using multiple separate air and ground radar systems. Fravor told ABC News, I can tell you, I think it was not from this world. I'm not crazy. I haven't been drinking. It was. After 18 years of flying, I've seen pretty much about everything I can see in that realm, and this was nothing close. Another accomplished Navy pilot with a flawless reputation, Lieutenant Ryan Graves, also told 60 Minutes that he and his fellow fighter pilots saw strange flying objects around Virginia Beach every day for a couple of years. Lieutenant Graves is a fighter pilot who has also worked on advanced research and development projects for DARPA. He said, I am worried, frankly. If these were tactical jets from another country that's just hanging out up there, it would be a massive issue. But because it looks slightly different, we're not willing to actually look at the problem in the face. We're happy to just ignore the facts that these things are out there watching us every day. The Navy is pretty particular when it comes to who they let fly $300 million airplanes. These guys are rock solid, tough as nails, and generally not prone to hallucinations or on the job fantasizing. I don't think UFO stories at the water cooler help with career advancement in the Navy or anywhere else. And Bob Lazar doesn't strike me as a fraud. I recommend the Vanadium audience listen to what he has to say about trying to reverse engineer crashed UFO technology decades ago for the government. He has some very compelling and convincing descriptions of his work at Area 51. He does not seem like a crackpot to me and his story hasn't shifted a bit in all the years. He seems like an engineer who is telling the truth. In his case, though, the truth was just a bit unbelievable. As new data, new evidence rolls in, it makes me reconsider past stories and accounts. The U.S. government has clearly reversed course on denying these things exist or blaming the sightings on weather balloons or advanced aircraft. There's just too much evidence now. I think the military doesn't want to look ridiculous for denying and trying to cover up something that's plainly there, something that their pilots are seeing on a daily basis, that even the public is starting to record. They can no longer ignore encounters that seem to be becoming more common every day. One afternoon in 1950, while taking a break from working on nuclear weapons and having some lunch at Los Alamos National Lab, famous physicist Enrico Fermi turned to some colleagues and asked, where are they? Or at least this is how one version of the story goes. A lot has changed since Fermi asked his famous question, including my mind on the matter of unidentified flying objects, or the new, perhaps more credible sounding acronym, UAP, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. Now these things are worldwide. They're everywhere. The stories are bubbling out of India, Britain, France, all over Central and South America. Declassified reports from militaries from different countries everywhere in the world are dribbling out with incontrovertible evidence that there are real, anomalous, supersonic craft in the skies above us every day. There are also signs these objects are involved in something going on under the oceans. This is like science fiction, but also like a real developing news story. 
I never thought I would see the day that mainstream government sources would be admitting there is something alien with us on Earth. Yet, here we are. As time goes on, fewer and fewer are denying that these things exist, that they seem to be doing something in the skies and oceans, and that their technology to us might as well be magic. Maybe I'm not nearly as scared as I should be. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.